We should also mention that uh, this this uh, raw roulette affords an opportunity for Victoria to wrestle Lita, who is back one week later after being fired in a steel cage match. Mm. And just like it was uh, Dallas with Ric Flair and the Von Erics, Matt's going to slam the door on Lita's head as she's escaping. So last week, I'm going to propose... But when you picked your title opportunity over me, I dump you, you lost your job and I helped you lose your job. And a week later, I slam a cage on your head. Dude, they are really investing in Matt as a heel here. But what'd you think of the decision to have him slam the door on her head? I mean, clearly that would never happen today with sponsor concerns and things like that. Right. But it was old school. It is the way you get a heat on a, I mean, if, if this is this beloved figure and we want to make sure there's nothing beloved about him and he's hateable slamming a cage door on a lady's head will do it. Yeah, it works. <laughs> it works. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it, it was a interesting angle. The, the only thing I didn't like about it was her return in a week. Yeah. It just takes the air out of the stipulation. It takes the air out of the concept of the match it helped the previous week, in my opinion. And, uh, that's the only thing I didn't like about it, but the talents pulled off their end of the bargain perfectly and did a hell of a job. So, uh, again, Matt taking advantage of an opportunity to speak. He's not the Harpo marks of pro wrestling where he's just a honk a horn to communicate. Right. He, he took advantage of this opportunity to talk and he, I thought he delivered. Uh, we saw that Lita had great skills in that, in that, uh, non wrestling or angle type role storyline type role. Uh, I think sometimes she was underestimated as far as her sex appeal, uh, was concerned and her popularity. Lita had a, that beautiful smile, those high cheekbones, very photogenic and was having the time of her life. At least I think she was, she seemed like she was. But what, you know, when talents get involved and have a wrestling relationship, all bets are off, all bets are off because you don't, you don't know how those relationships are going to end up and uh, what's going to be the eventual outcome. So, uh, but it gave those two talents specifically off the top of my head, an opportunity to be heard and seen in a key role on television. And they came through. We, uh, we got to talk about the fact that Christian's going to come down and make the save we're building towards Christian and Matt. And, uh, next up we see Randy Orton defeating Sergeant slaughter. This is when Randy's keeping this whole legend killer thing going as a reminder, Sergeant slaughter's 55 years old here. And the perception is, wow. you know, oh, look at this, this old timer, Lord bless his heart sort of thing today. Chris Jericho's 53. He's two years younger than slaughter is here. It's interesting to me how perception of time and age has changed in wrestling. Would you agree with that? Yeah. I, and I'm, I'm pulling for that concept. Yes. <laughs> for me, be selfish. Uh, yeah, I, I see what you're saying and I agree. I agree. It's changed. It's, you know, I saw where, uh, my God, how long did Vin Scully broadcast over 50 right. years? Yeah. Keith, I mentioned Keith Jackson, one of my heroes earlier, all those decades and decades of, uh, productivity becoming, becoming the voice of college football. It's all, it's awfully hard to, for your voice to be identified with a genre automatically, instantly. And both those guys, Vin Scully and, and Keith Jackson, for example, uh, that, that happened in their career, they earned it. And so uh, they should not be taken out of their slot because of what they're, how, how old it says they are on their driver's license. Can you still get the job done? If you can get out there and do it. If you can't bow out gracefully, and many of us are not ready to bow out gracefully. 67 years, I think is how long Vin Scully did his thing until he Amazing. was like, I mean, I think he was like 86 
or 88. I mean, he yeah. was, he was up there when he finished, but yeah, 67 years behind the microphone for him. That's astonishing. That's astonishing. That's where you get a gold watch <laughs> Yeah, and a, and a day in your honor or something like that. But, uh, he's, uh, yeah. Age that had nothing to do with it. That's like sex, uh, not having sex. Thinking back <laughs> to blue Chew's commercial earlier today. Uh, but you know, uh, it's, uh, it's just a timing, right place, right time, chemistry, all those things are going to play in this top particular topic that we're talking about. We should mention, um, a little write up from the observer here, because every now and again, we think about how wrestling has changed. Like we were just having that conversation about age. Well, check this out. There was a show long skit where hurricane and Rosie were chasing a midget. That's the word used here. Called Fernando all night. The midget looked up Terry's skirt. So she in high heels was in scenes giving chase as well. There were only two funny things about this. First was a skit with storm and Venus hitting on some conservative salt Lake city women who were worried because they thought the wrestlers were strange as storm was acting normal hurricane and Rosie were chasing the midget. The other was when someone asked me if WWE was introducing minis. And why they were chasing mini RVD. The skit ended with Fernando jumping in Jim Ross's lap and Ross being declared the winner, which it seemed pretty clear Ross would have rather done without. Yeah, look at Lawler's face. Lawler loves the misery of others. <laughs> Anytime I got put into a compromising position, he could not be any happier. God bless him. He had a birthday here about a week ago. King did. Happy belated birthday, buddy. So, uh, yeah, it was, uh, I did a lot of unique things on that show. That's why I'm so associated with Monday nights, uh, yeah. at, at one time, not today, but you know, right, right, right. Tenure and experience memories. Some of them last is Vince. Uh, I mean, this seems really weird and out of place. We know that Brian was the comedy writer and certainly there's, this is written for comedy, but. We know that Vince has, uh, his taste. Was he, was he a big fan of, uh, little person comedy skits? Was this something? Of that course. He yeah. That, they, they were on the same list of toilet humor. Yeah. Uh, you know, uncomfortable, you know, the sexual stuff. Uh, he, he, they loved that. He loved, you know, so yeah, he had his picadillos as they say, he had his particular things that he he always got a chuckle out of, and if you could take Vince an idea that he was, that he laughed about or that he seemingly enjoyed, uh, you get a, you get a merit badge. So, uh, and I think that's where we were with that, with the, with that, with that deal. Uh, who was the booker then? Was Russo the booker at that time? Uh, no, he's gone in this era. This would have been, you know, the whole committee with Brian and others. Brian was always the glue that held that thing together. I'll be honest with you. He kept rock happy. And that was very, very important.